Hello and welcome to Pest in Class, expert voices in pest management. Today I talk with Bryson McCudgeon, Director of Customer Success of Smarter Launch, and Cody Smith, the co-founder of Smarter Launch. We discuss their passion for the industry and how they perfected proposals for small to large businesses alike. I'm your host, Amanda Salvatore. Let's get into it. Cody Smith, you are the co-founder of Smarter Launch and Bryson McCutcheon, you are the director of customer success. Thank you so much for coming on to the podcast today. You're welcome. Good to be here. Thank yeah. you. Of course, of course. Let's get into it. Uh, for our podcast, we like to start with a little bit of an icebreaker so we get to know you. And your question today, what shows or media are you currently enjoying at the moment? Um, I'm a huge Shark Tank junkie so and especially like on, in conferences and things like that in the hotel room that's kind of my late night thing where i just jump on and start watching shark tank it's usually on for two or three hours straight you know so i i love to binge on shark tank amazing amazing thank you cody and how about you bryson i am on season seven of seinfeld right now first time through Really? So, I've never watched it either. Are you enjoying it's it? It's excellent. It is, one of, it is one of the best shows that I've ever watched. And I <laughs> took way too long to get into it. And then I don't know if I'm ashamed to say or not ashamed to say, but my wife and I fall asleep to Gilmore Girls every single night. <laughs> and I used to be very upset about it. But you know what? I guess I'm not ashamed. You're embracing it's it very. You know it's what? a funny show. <laughs> it is a funny she's show. She's probably seen it 20 times through. <laughs> so here I am saying not ashamed Gilmore Girls fan. Embrace it's the it. season we're we're entering <laughs> fall so yeah. and i yep. feel like that's, that's that's when i start watching gilmore girls yeah. as well i'm a huge fan that's so that's what she says too I, fall season gilmore girls yeah as soon as it's sweater sweater weather uh-huh that's what's pumpkin on. spice everything it's gilmore <laughs> yes. girls <laughs> yes yes i agree i yeah. fully support and no no need to be ashamed yep brilliant sure. brilliant Great. choices all around so first and foremost how did you guys find yourself in the pest industry. Cody, how about you start? Yeah, so I uh, grew up in the pest industry. My dad had a one-man show growing up. So at a young age of, you know, 11, 12 years old, I was, you know, carrying hoses for him and, and helping him where I could. I eventually started running his route on the weekends uh, to give him a break. So on Saturdays, I would go out and spray when I could drive and um, just kind of did that all through my childhood. I think I left the industry or left to college, not really wanting to be a part of the industry or, or in my mind, not wanting to be a bug man. And, uh, I think the, the longer I was in, in school and realizing what the freedoms that he had and the community that he had around him, it pulled me back. And so after college, I knew that's kind of what I wanted to get into. So I ended up, you know, knocking doors and kind of creating my own route and eventually merging with my dad and um, taking over his route, giving him the opportunity to retire. So it was kind of a win-win for the both of us. And 20 years later, you know, it just kept on going. Here you are, That's right. amazing, amazing. Bryson, how about you? Yeah, my, uh, my parents, uh, my mom and my stepdad, they had owned Action Termite and Pest Control since about 2000, 2001. And I always told myself I would never get into the pest control industry. I just wanted to carve my own path, never do the family business thing. and. I think I passed out flyers door to door at one point and I did a uh, termite job for about a half a day and I quit. <laughs> I just, uh, yeah, I wasn't, uh, wasn't manly enough to do it. But yeah, I was in technology leadership roles for about 10 years and ultimately just decided to, uh, my brother Brent approached me and asked if I wanted to uh, help him build something amazing. And um, he had taken over the business at about 2017, 2018 and sure enough did that with him and it was amazing. And uh, we actually uh, partnered with private equity firm, and uh, he's still at the helm helm there, and uh, he's just kicking butt. And then I, uh, we were customers of Smarter Launch, and love the team, love the product, so joined them, and here I am. That's well, that's yeah. incredible. And ironically, our fathers actually worked together, which yeah. we didn't know until just recently. Yeah. But they worked together years ago, together for about a year. Yep. That's unbelievable. Yeah. How did you guys figure that out? I think. I think Scott, my stepdad, Scott yeah. Ag, he uh, he let me know the other day. I was like, my mind was blown. I was like, that makes no sense. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you were so, destined. You were destined right. to work together. I love <laughs> that. So I know both of you sound like it's a part of your family history, but maybe you were trying to, like you were saying before, 
make your own way. Yeah. What is it about the pest industry that pulls you back in and keeps you here? You know, I would. I, there's kind of a saying that we say a lot is like you never plan to get into pest control or the industry, but once you're in, like you just can't get out. Uh, and it, it just goes to the community that's here. I know so many other pest control business owners throughout the nation actually now with going to conferences and things where they're just so willing to help. They're so willing to give information and you know everyone helps each other and it just raises the industry as a whole to be better businessmen, to be you know better people. And so the community is such a great community and then you throw in you know, the software companies, you know, the field routes and how great they are in the community there. Just an awesome industry and and continues to get better and better and and help, you know, more and more people. I think for me, I mean, it's funny when I first got into the pest control industry, I even though I had sort of grown up in it and I was around it, I still didn't really know much about it. I just thought, you know, how hard could it be? Just go around and spray some stuff. You know, I had no idea. I'm sure that I had the same mindset that many customers have of just this must be a simple business. Mm -hmm. And you get into it and like, yes, it is simple and you need to execute on the simplicity, but there's also complexity to it that's really fun and there's challenges that are, yes, challenging, but really, really fun. And they're so different from any other business I've ever been a part of. And I think that's kind of what kept me every day getting excited to, to come to work and, and figure out how to solve these things. You know, and I think interacting with the technicians is super fun because they have such a difficult job out there and especially in we're you know we're in phoenix so it is the you know middle of summer 115 degrees out there and just having uh it's just empathy and sympathy for them being out there and getting to interact with them and realize that they have a huge smile on their face doing what they're doing and and when they don't you can be there to help them out and help them through it and so um, it's a fun industry. I I was like I was resistant at first and now that I'm in it I'm like yeah this is where I'm staying so yeah. Quick story, actually. So my wife and I went to Costa Rica years ago. And when we got there, I had heard that the Costa Rican scorpion was a really cool scorpion. And when we got there to stay at our place, they said, hey, you shouldn't have to worry. This time of year, there's really no scorpions around. And I was maybe a, as a pest control guy, I was like let down like, oh, I wanted to see one of those scorpions. <laughs> right. And um, and my wife was thrilled and like, oh, thank goodness we don't have to <laughs> deal with that. Right. Anyway, so we had our trip, we came home. When we came home, she opened up her suitcase and right on top of her suitcase was sitting one of these Costa Rican dark, big yes, scorpions. let's go. And I hear a scream, <laughs> I'm downstairs, I hear this scream and she's like, Cody, get up here. And so I come running up, I'm like, what? You know, thinking like something was horrible. And, and she's like, look, and she's just, you know, distraught. And I'm like, yes, this is the coolest thing ever, right? <laughs> So I scoop up a bag and I put it in a bag and I'm like, I'm going to keep this as a pet, you know, type thing. And she's like, you're crazy. And I didn't have anything to put it in. So I put it in a, a plastic bag and I put it on my uh, counter in my bathroom. But I left the top of the bag just a little bit open so that it could breathe sure. while I <laughs> went nice to guy. a meeting. And then when I got back from the meeting, I was going to put it in a bottle, you know, and everything. And I came back and it wasn't there. And I, I thought my wife was playing a trick on me. And so she, I said, hey, where's this? Where happened to the scorpion? Oh, no. And she's like, what are you talking about, right? And she's like, you're kidding. And I'm like, no, it's not there. I spent the whole night blacklighting all through closets, all the kids' rooms. Like, she was freaking out. We couldn't go to sleep that night until she found the scorpion, right? I looked everywhere, couldn't find it. Finally, at like 2 in the morning, I was like, I, I've checked the bed and everything, all the kids' beds. We're fine tonight, like sleep. I'll get up in the morning and keep looking. So the next morning I get up, I look for an hour and a half, two hours, can't find this scorpion anywhere. And I had a meeting to go to, so I went to get ready for a meeting. So I'm in the shower and I feel this little... No. <laughs> no. I feel this little tingle on my foot and I'm standing on the drain and I step back from the drain and out comes the scorpion. Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> and I, and you can tell I, that I am not a technician yes, at all because and I'm, I'm like, freaking out. Yes. And I, I let out the biggest like, yes. And my wife's thinking like, what? She comes running in and she's like, what are you saying yes for? And I'm like, I found it. And she's like, oh my gosh. But realistically, it was the first time in my life that I realized what we do in pest control is we bring peace of mind to people. Mm -hmm. 
And I hadn't felt that in my life in the sense that realizing like the peace of mind that I had now from knowing that we were safe in our home and that my kids were safe, that was huge. Yeah. And I realized right then that's what we bring to the pest control world. It's public safety. You know, it's peace of mind knowing that your home is protected, that your home is safe. And I've got four kids. And so to have that peace of mind, it was the first time that I realized this industry is why, like, this is so great, you know. And, and that's why I love what I do or what I've done all along and being in this industry is because we protect, you know, public safety. We, we protect families in their homes. What an incredible story <laughs> to rediscover yeah. your mission and the purpose of what we do here. Totally. That's amazing. You know, what's really so, funny is trying to explain to uh, my daughters when I was working at Action what I do. My, my youngest daughter, Taylor, she's five. She's like, Daddy, do you just go to work and there's just a whole patch of bugs there? <laughs> and she just she just thought I hung out with bugs all day. <laughs> I couldn't, and I was like, "Yeah, that's what I do." That's you essentially, go. you know, what when you narrow it down, yeah, you, right. you boil it down. That's what yeah. it is, exactly. So, how about you tell our listeners what Smarter Launch does? Yeah, so a few years back, um, some guys in the industry we got together, and there's a lot of you know pain points in the pest control industry, obviously on the doors and selling and all that kind of stuff, and we realized there just really wasn't something out there that gave a really good proposal. And so uh, I've got some great partners that put a lot of thought into this software that we have. And so Smarter Launch is a proposal software. It's a standalone proposal software where we help pest control companies save time, save money, and put out a professional presentation for a proposal that gives the customer all the information they need with photos and videos and some really cool integrations that they can have the information they need so they can make the right decisions. Absolutely. I'd love to talk about some of these pain points and how Smarter Launch addresses them. What are some of those points that you found and how are we solving them? Yeah, so, I mean, in the pest control industry, you know, the majority of the industry is still writing out, you know, proposals on paper. They're graphing on paper, you know, with a ruler. Uh, I remember talking to a guy one time and asking, like, uh, how they did, like, a bay window on their graph. And he's like, oh, I use a quarter. And I was like, a quarter? And he's like, yeah, I just put the quarter down and I trace around the quarter to make a, yeah. you know... And I was like, in our day and age, there's got to be more. There's got to be a better way to do this, right? And so our proposal software has a full graphing tool um, to put together a proposal that has some pictures and videos and things. A lot of times that takes a, a, a salesperson 30 minutes, 45 minutes to put together where with our software, you can do that in less than five minutes. And so there's just some really cool things that you can do now with technology and so it just shows a very professional look so that a one-man show can compete with a national brand in the presentation that he puts together. And so whether it's residential or commercial, there's you know so many things you can do. And so with graphing tool and uh, you know being able to upload photos and videos to it to integrate with your reviews so your reviews come in and show on the proposal, doing a video presentation of the proposal so that way they can see and hear the features and benefits that are there versus maybe you know somebody just getting the price there's so much more to it and so it just gives a really beautiful professional way for them to get that information and then like say make the right decision and know the value that's going to come from that company when they do make the right decision yeah and it's all about customer experience right so from start to finish if you're giving them a modern, professional, intelligent, this beautiful proposal, they're going to automatically, I mean, typically assume that, okay, if you put this level of detail into my proposal, what level of detail are you gonna put into my service? Mm -hmm. And so there's typically this level of trust that happens almost immediately from that proposal. And when they have, let's say they're doing a termite job or rodent job or something, and they have a few different proposals in hand, and they see the one that was handwritten, they see the one that was kind of slapped together in Adobe or something, and then they see what we're delivering, the, the aspect of price almost goes out the window, they just see the value. Mm. And so when they're seeing the value, they see that professional proposal, they're more likely to go with you and then trust you through that journey. And so I think that's 
really important and that's something we're trying to solve and I believe we are solving, so. Yeah. A proposal is where you start and that first impression. Totally. And it sounds like you are setting up these businesses, small and large, for success. Yeah. And giving peace of mind to that customer as well that they're going to show up and do a great job. Yeah, and the fact that we have that integration built out with field routes and, and the ability for it to be really seamless so that they can stay in using that software that, you know, controls that and manages their customer as far as the routing and the scheduling and all those things. Now we're just able to add to that value and be another, you know, another tool in their in their box in the sense of being able to really create a professional proposal and take them through the whole process. So I know that you were in development for three years and you have been out into the world for a year and a half. So what is the future of Smarter Launch? The sky's the limit. We're seeing such great success with the companies that are coming on board and you know, the increase in close rate for them. They're selling more, they're closing more deals. They can track that through our software so they know exactly how many proposals have gone out, how many have been closed, what their revenue is from those closed deals. So it's just now it's just building, building out. And so uh, as we continue to build this out and, and grow it, we expect to go into other industries as well. Um, but we really want to dig deep into pest control because that's where we're from. And I think that helps in the sense that companies trust us because we're from the industry. I've been out on the doors. You know, our partners, we've all been out on the door knocking, selling, doing all the things that these guys are doing. And so we've really tried to clean that up and make it, you know, as easy and less stressful as possible so that the, the software does all the work and they don't have to you know, do that work. And so, yeah, we just continue to plan to continue to grow and, and uh, keep helping the industry. And I would say too, just to kind of piggyback off that, and just as Field Routes has a continuous improvement mindset, which we've seen over the years, I mean, that's, where, that's what we want too, is to have that continuous improvement mindset, listen to our customers and, and truly listen to them, not just get the feedback and kind of put it to the side, but truly listen to them um, and make sure that they are wildly successful. And if, I think if you show that level of care to your customer and that level of, of deep empathy and, and understanding of what they're going through and understanding that they want to grow their revenue, I think that's where just you earn that trust with them. And then also they, they let us know what, what they want. You know, they're le letting us know this is, if you only had this, I could grow my revenue this much further. And, you know, and that we're able to start having those conversations with them and then improve upon, upon the product because of those conversations. And yeah, I think it's just scaling and growing with our customers is, uh, is where we probably are going to take this thing. So yeah, listening yeah. to your customers, it's amazing how you can get hyper focused, but when you're able to listen to your customers, you're thinking outside of the box. They're using this product all the time and they're finding things that you might miss because you're, yeah. you're so focused, yeah. right? So I'm so glad that you guys are taking the time to really listen and to really grow. Yeah. And what's cool is oftentimes our customers will show us things that the app can do that we didn't even know. Maybe we forgot that it can do that and they're doing it really, really well. And they have this best practice, this new best practice that we're like, oh my goodness, we need to get this in front of our other customers and we need to double down on what they're doing here. And, you know, I see field routes doing those same things where Customers are using field routes in, in ways that maybe field routes didn't intend, but then they realize, oh, this is actually a really, really good way. And I'll see field routes double down on that effort to make sure their other customers do that as well. So, yeah. Yes, listening is key. For Before sure. we end today, I want to ask, is there anything that you wish we discussed? Hmm. Just dive deep into Seinfeld every. Uh, <laughs> get, where, where is it streaming? Is it Netflix? Oh, it's I Netflix. Have, yeah. It's Netflix. Yeah. I have it's to Netflix. get into it. I have to get into it, and everyone at home who is listening yeah. also should revisit or get into it. Yeah, I'm a super fan now. So <laughs> maybe on a serious, more serious <laughs> note, I would say um, I think if you're listening out there and you're a pest control guy, there are some awesome technology out there, and I would just say you know with field routes you know, the support team there, get with them. They've got great partnerships with a lot of different different ways to do business. And I would just say to all of you out there, keep helping the industry. Uh, as we help each other, we raise the bar in the industry and we do a lot of good out there. So I would just thank all those guys that are out there, you know, grinding because the grinding's paying off. Yeah, I agree. Stay, stay in community with 
others in the pest control industry. Don't do this in on a silo. Don't try to hold back and pretend that you have industry secrets, secrets that, yeah. that no one else has. Just right. I think that uh, you know um, we can all work together, and there are uh, plenty of structures and buildings and homes in this world, and all of them are liable to have pests. And there's plenty to go around, so let's just help each other out and, and help each other grow revenue. And um, I think that that's key. For sure. Cody Smith, Bryson McCutcheon, thank you so much for coming to Pest in Class. I had a great time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Absolutely. Appreciate thank you. it.